All right, uh, I guess we'll kick this thing off. Um, thanks everybody for coming out to uh, today's seminar. We've got two student presenters uh, today, both from Power Electronics Domain, and I'll introduce each one of them individually before their presentations. So first up, we have uh, Xing Xuan. Um, he received his BS degree in electrical engineering from a university in China that I'll let him pronounce if he wants to. Um, he's currently a PhD student in electrical engineering here at UT, and his current research interests include uh, applications of uh, Silicon, right? yeah. Silicon power devices, medium voltage converters designed with wide band gap devices. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the data. And today I'm very happy to present my um, work on the 10K racing carbon MOSFET base light for medium voltage applications which I have been working on in the lab for a long time, and it's about the design switching performance evaluation. So um, here comes the outline. I will start from introduction, literature review, talk about the design of the face light, and then using the face light to um, investigate the impact of LCD capacitors in the converter, followed by conclusions. So we know medium voltage converters are widely used in a lot of um, emerging and uh, critical applications. As we are familiar with the EV fast charger and data center power supply. And now they are dominated by silicon activities. Recently, um, the 10 kV carbon MOSFETs have been emerging rapidly. Compared to silicon activities, they have higher blocking voltage, higher operation temperature, higher switching frequency and uh, faster switching speed. So this device level benefits further give, give us a lot of benefits at the converter level. So they are very promising in those uh, medium voltage applications. And uh, so to apply this 10 kVs in carbon MOSFETs in the converter, their switching changes and performance have to be understood deeply. Um, Usually, double pulse test DDT is widely used uh, to um, characterize the switching trend and the performance of power devices. So, um, double pulse test is just like a pulse test to capture the turn on and turn off trend for the characterization. There are two um, configurations for DPT the so switch, um, switch pair. Um, like this, we have two identical switches in one lag, so we also call it a phase lag. Um, and the, the, the other one is the um, switch diode pair. It has a dial to conduct the current when the um, switch is off. So usually the device on the test, DUT, is the lower device. It's good for measurement. And uh, the phase lag configuration is more preferred because it's a more fundamental building block for our electronics converters. And uh, with DPT, the impact of numerous factors in the switching of 10 kV carbon MOSFET have been investigated, like uh, the gate resistors and uh, also the temperature. However, the switching of 10 kV carbon MOSFET because of faster switching speed, is actually more sensitive to the parasitic capacitors in the converter. But uh, the previous study has not been able to analyze this because their DPT setup is only designed for DPT. It's very different from the real converter. And uh, it's designed to minimize those converter parasitics. So to study these um, parasitic capacitors in the converter, we really need a phase like to that's capable of the continuous operation as part of the converter. So previous um, literature also talked about how to design the phase line with continuous operation capability um, based on the 10 kV carbon MOSFETs. And the gate driver is like, like the key part, but um, usually they neglect the considerations for enabling the reliable continuous operation and also how to fully test and validate the phase line at rating voltage is still 
challenging and uh, not being um, investigated fully. So I will talk about the design. So our 10 kV is being covered most likely from wolf speed. It's actually a 10 kV only 20 amp uh, device. And it has the big drain plate for the heat dissipation. And uh, the design baseline has a ready voltage of 6.5 kV. It's targeted for the reliable building block of a real medium voltage converter. Um, it has a pretty compact design, so we can see here the 3D design of the baseline and uh, also the prototype on the high voltage test platform. So uh, actually the phase lag is designed by the whole team. For the phase lag, the gate driver is critical to realizing the continuous um, reliable operation. So next I will focus on the gate driver design. The key for the gate driver design is to realize fast switching speed and the reliable operation at 6.5 kV with pretty high DVDT, I mean up to 80 volt per nanosecond, so it's very high screw rate. And uh, I have summarized the specifications we developed here for the gate driver, uh, like the driving voltage range, peak driving current, and the uh, rise full time. They are developed for the um, fast switching speed because these devices are really fast. You don't want to. You want your gate driver to also be fast. And uh, the short circuit protection, uh, status feedback in every switching cycle, as well as the dead time, they are designed for reliable continuous operation. And uh, they have, the gate driver has three stages. The first stage is uh, signal transfer and uh, feedback stage. So this stage is in charge of the um, communication by hub optics and also the um, signal transfer. So they generate the final uh, gate signal with the 500 um, nanosecond embedded that time. We do this by only delaying the rising edge of the gate signal and no delay in the falling edge. The, this stage is also in charge of the um, feedback signal sent back to the controller. So during the continuous operation of the phase line, we want to have the feedback in every switching cycle so that we can monitor the communication and also the status of the gate driver. So how do we do this? We do this by um, acknowledging every rising or falling edge with a short pulse, like you can see here. Every time we have a rising edge or falling edge in the received gate signal, uh, we responded with uh, 500 nanosecond low signals. So by this, we can acknowledge the edge and also if something is wrong in the fiber optic communication or the components in the gate driver, the feedback signal will be wrong so the controller will know and respond to it. So we can see the components inside the green box can be monitored by the feedback signal. And also once something really bad happens, like short circuit, the feedback signal can report the fault. And the, the second stage is uh, gate driving stage. We select the gate drive IC to meet the specifications. And in our case, the 10 kV SIP carbide MOSFET has pretty good uh, cross-talk performance. It's not a big issue because of the large um, input capacitor. And uh, we also need the overcurrent protection stage to protect the device from the short circuit. So um, this our protection is selected because um, it has a pretty mature method to um, achieve high noise immunity and it's effective and uh, pretty easy implementation in different cases. There are also some design challenges. So we know this our protection is monitor the VDS of the MOSFET. If VDS is too high, that means the current is also too high, and then we should um, shut down the device. So, and also um, for the challenges, we need to protect the device within 1.5 microsecond once the short circuit happens, because the, usually the 10 kV 3 carbon MOSFETs can only survive like two to um, 
time microseconds in short circuit conditions. So we need to respond fast and also um, avoid this triggering. And uh, you know, the device's IV characteristic is very different at different temperatures. So by monitoring the BDS, that gives us um, different uh, threshold current at different temperatures. So at least the specifications of the protection here. So at 105 degrees C, we achieve the threshold of 20 amp, which is the current rating of the device. And uh, this slide shows the implementation of the DSA protection. So we have the circuit to monitor VDS of the MOSFET. Um, and uh, that gives us the DSAG voltage. Once the VD side is exceeding the threshold voltage, which is, which is 19 volts here, the protection is triggered. And uh, the protection is triggered. So um, we clamp the VD side at uh, minus 5 volt when the gate signal is low. So we can achieve the we can avoid the force triggering during the turn off transient, but also we need the blanking time to avoid the force triggering during the turn on transient. Uh, that's a big deal because it accounts for the like 90% of the total response time. We need to select the blanking time based on the turn on transient carefully. So the minimum blanking time can be achieved is by 50 nanoseconds. That's based on the study of the turn on transient. So here uh, we designed the blanking time to be 1.2 microsecond. That gives us um, 1.3 microsecond response time. So this is like kind of a conservative design because uh, we want to increase the blanking capacitor. CDLK, we want to further increase this noise immunity. So how do we validate the design phase? Like we have developed a very systematic and comprehensive testing procedures of the phase like, and the, the devices are pretty expensive. So we want we don't want to damage the devices. So it's very cautious. So basically, we do it step by step. It has DPT, short circuit test, and continuous test. So this slide shows the design design protection meets all of the specifications for both upper and lower MOSFET, it's pretty good. And for the continuous test, that's pretty exciting because finally we can run it uh, continuously. And uh, it's configured as a half bridge inverter at radiant voltage. So we can see very nice sinusoidal waveform, the yellow curve, and the slight, very slight crosstalk due to the <coughs> high DVDT. So we validate the continuous operation of the phase light. Now we can use it to study the switching performance. So inevitably, we have some parasitic capacitors in the power stage of medium voltage converters. There are three major sources of the converter, of the parasitic capacitor, like the empty parallel shock diode, low inductor, and the hissing. So today I will basically focus on the um, EPC, um, I mean the parasitic capacitor of the low inductor, maybe a little bit about the parasitic capacitor from the heat sink. So this shows the DPT setup. So when we study the low inductors on um, parasitics, we really need a high voltage inductor that could serve as the load of the medium voltage converter. So we got one that's really designed for 15 kV AC free. And it has a parasitic effective parallel capacitor, EPC, of, th of 35 picofarad. And we can add the external cap to increase this EPC. And uh, this slide shows uh, we need to have good measurement setup to capture the transient accurately. So um, this figure shows the um, Turn on, turn off the VDT at different uh, with different EPC in the load inductor. 
So the DVDT we calculated here is the average DVDT of BBS as it changes from 10% to 90%. So we can see the larger EPC slows down both turn on and turn off DVDT. And based on the normalized DVDT table here, uh, it actually has more significant impact on the turn off changes. It, did, uh, it slows down the turn off changes more significantly. <coughs> Excuse me, significantly. As for the impact of the EPC on the loss, um, if larger EPC increases the turn on loss or decreases the turn off loss, so the increase in turn on, turn -on loss is due to two reasons. Uh, firstly, uh, we have um, longer voltage bore time because of lower DVDT, and also we have more current overshoot. That's because of more capacitance to be charged from zero to BDC. And the, the turn off loss decreases because of the lower overlap loss due to the VDX and ID. We can see here the, the dash curve, the voltage um, drops more, sorry, the current drops more quickly while the current increases more slowly. That gives us a lower turn off loss. And what about the total switching energy loss? I mean, E on plus E off. So that uh, decreases because um, the larger, I mean, the turn on loss dominates. And then here shows the uh, detailed data. So if we have like four times higher EPC, 141 versus uh, 35 picofarad, up, that gives us about 15% uh, increase in the total switching energy loss. And uh, you can see here it's about 15%. And uh, the impact is more slightly more significant at lower current. And uh, so what about the time domain waveform, the detailed switching changes? What we find is the LS is caused by, because we need high voltage wire to connect the device with the load inductor. That gives us about 6.5 microhenry LS in the experimental setup. So we find that the LS has large impact on the switching transient, especially the turn-off transient, because LS will cause resonance together with EPC in the load inductor. During the switching transient, the load current is not stable. And the, the turn-off transient relies on the load current to charge the capacitors. So we can see we got this uh, resonance. It's pretty um, Severe is the when the current is low, the turn off change is long, so in both BDS and ID. And also, um, when the current is higher, we can see the DVDT is not consistent. DVDT, DVDT is high here and then gets low and gets high again. So, although actually it decreases, larger EVD decreases the average DVDT, but in terms of DVDT stress, we mean the um, peak DVDT, it doesn't necessarily uh, decrease the peak DVDT. We can see here, DVDT is almost the same. I guess I'm running out of time, so I'll quickly go through the um, impact of the parasitic capacitor due to the heat sink. So heat sink uh, brings us parasitic capacitors in different cases. Uh, it's really complicated depending on the hissing design and the, the grounding scheme. So here we picked two examples. The first one focuses on the floating hissing that gives us very small um, parasitic capacitors. The second one, thermal design B, you know, it basically gives us the CP1 in parallel with the um, lower MOSFET in the phase line. So that's impacting the switching transient. In our setup, it's about 13 picofarad. So this shows the impact. Uh, it causes increases in turn-off loss, and it's more significant at the light load. And then what if the CPY is larger? So we, we had an ex experiment to let CPY to be 106 picofarad. And uh, we can see more tremendous um, increase in the um, 
loss and then it slows down both turn on and turn off transient. So, and uh, it's still more tremendous increase in the light load case. So here comes the conclusions. And uh, we have successfully designed and retested the 6.5 kV baseline based on the 10 kV zinc carbide MOSFET continuously. And we have developed the systematic testing procedures. Basically, the larger um, capacitor caused by the converter, like load inductor and the heating, gives us a slower switching transient. And uh, basically, the, they have more significant uh, impact on the um, loss at a lighter load. So with that, I'll conclude my presentation. And uh, so I will thank my the whole team EPA project and our sponsors, especially Power America, NSF, and DOE. And thank you much, very much for your attention. Uh, I just uh, want to ask why uh, do you care about the parasitic uh, capacitance on the low inductor? What does that represent? Do you uh, really do a converter? What does that parasitic mean? Because that could increase your switching loss. And uh, it, I mean, the real case is more complicated in the ideal double box test case. So I think the basic reason is the DDT could give us a wrong estimation about the switching loss and will lead to the bad design in the heat uh, management, thermal management. That's the main case. So thank you for your nice talk. Uh, I would like to ask, based on your knowledge, what do you think is the fundamental difference between ten uh, between the gate driver for ten heavy six point five and that for low voltage uh, six point five like one hundred and seventeen hundred and seventeen? Um, there is no fundamental difference. Uh, I think the main difference is uh, when we design the gate driver. Um, high voltage um, devices, we care more about the um, reliability. That's why we want to design the um, that time um, realized by hardware. And we want to have the feedback signal in every switching cycle because basically they are more um, expensive and they take, and then they take more voltage and current. We want to have more access to its information. So we add more feedback function. How did you determine how much dead time? Yeah, so the dead time is determined based on the switching transient analysis. So based on our switching analysis, the so minimum dead time we should have is about uh, 160 um, nanoseconds. So here we, we, we are like conservative, we do it as a 500 nanosecond. So it's kind of um, limited by the Hardware that by the IC we can select. So it's like not a, it's not discrete number, it's not a continuous number. So we select a kind of a conservative and a appropriate number for us. Uh, in your presentation for your big drive design, you did set up post talk was not an issue. So you didn't. Uh, design your gate driver to, to deal with those problems, but then in the waveforms, you did show there was cross talk actually happening. Yeah, but it's pretty slight, it's well below the gate threshold voltage. It's like only like minus three volts, but our threshold is like two volts. So it's really not an issue for us. So we have a lot of margin for the problem. <coughs> Any questions?
So uh, next we're going to hear from Jing Jing Sun. Uh, she received her BS degree from a university in China. Um, in 26, or that was in 2016, in electron engineering. And she's currently a PhD student um, in power electronics here at UT. Her research interests are wide band gap semiconductor devices and applications and power supply design for data centers. Okay, um, uh, hello everyone, I'm Jing Jing Sun. I'm a uh, so today, uh, I'm going to talk about the design of a GAN-based high-efficiency CRM capable chassis converter. I will focus on the device control and the inductor design. Um, so this is my outline of my presentation. Uh, so I will go through the introduction part, the device modulation, the inductor design, the control strategy, and the experimental verification. So first, let's start with the introduction. Uh, we all know that power supplies for telecommunication and the data centers are very important, especially for today's cost-centric society. Um, but they really consume a lot of uh, electricity, uh, as can be said. But the only um, half of the those energy is finally sent to the solar equipment. Significant part of the energy is used for the space cooling. How long? Wasted as the losses. So the high efficiency and the high power density power supply is are required by an industry. So how shall we improve the performance? Uh, in terms of, of the of the technology, this is the open hole a power factor production converter uh, with the critical conduction mode operation is very popular. Mainly because uh, it is very simple in the simple structure and uh, it has a capability to uh, minimize the switching loss by achieving the level voltage switching or the value switching. Uh, however, if we're using the traditional uh, silicon based devices, the PSD converter still suffers from large voltage of the reverse recovery losses and the switching frequency is not very high. So the converter is still funky and the efficiency cannot be very high. Um, thanks for the emergence of the beam nitride devices, the reverse recovery loss of the body valve can be removed. At the same time, uh, the switching frequency is able to be pushed um, to very high level. So, uh, combine the photomol capsic converter and the GAN devices, the GAN based CRM photomol capsic converter is very likely to achieve the high efficiency and the power density. So, let's look at the Topology of the solar power PFC converter. So it is actually a booster type PFC converter. So it includes an inductor and four switches. Uh, the first phase like here is the uh, GAN phase like operates at the uh, high switching speed, and the second phase like is the silicon based phase like um, operates at the uh, line cycle. So for this converter, when it works at the critical connection mode, which means the inductor current will drop to zero on the negative in each switch cycle, and then the soft switching or the value switch happen so that the switch loss is minimized. Uh, let's say it's in details. So first, in the first region, when the input voltage is lower than half of the output voltage, the energy uh, stored in the inductor actually is enough to fully um, discharge the output capacitance during the daytime. Hence, the critical source voltage of the active switch can drop to zero before coming on the device again. In this way, the soft switch is achieved. However, in the second region, when the input voltage is larger than half of the output voltage, the energy is not enough to fully discharge the output capacitance. So the current source voltage is only relevant to a valid point. Oh, sorry. Uh, leading to a um, partial switching loss in the volume distance of the active switch. So uh, if we want to further increase the efficiency, uh, we need to achieve the source switching also in the region two. So, uh, if we could uh, further decrease the negative current to gain more energy, then the device is controlled. That is also the basic idea for the device control. Mm, so how can we achieve the device 
in the online cycle. Um, so this picture shows uh, inductor current in one switching cycle and the two gate signals, gate signals for the devices. So in the second region, to achieve the soft switching, we purposely expanded the conduction time of the synchronized rectified switch so that uh, we can get a more active current and the energy is enough for some soft switching. However, here is one problem. How much is the natural current we need to extend? We know if it, it is too small, um, I mean, the natural current is too high, it is not uh, enough for the device achievement. But if the, conduction, if the extended conduction time is too long, it will lead to larger current ripple and more conduction loss. So we need to have a limit. Um, based on the state trajectory, actually we could calculate the minimum uh, value of the extended time for the device. But this is only ensure the soft switching in one point. Uh, in order to achieve the soft switching with a margin, in our design, we define the device margin constraints. So uh, as can we say in this state trajectory, as long as the radius R2 is larger than the input voltage, the soft switching is achieved. So in our design, we define the coefficient k as a ratio of R2 over Ve. So in the second region, the k is always larger than 1. So the device is ensured naturally. Um, and in the second region, we um, purposely limit the k to a minimum value, which is slightly larger than one. Uh, in this case, not only the sub-switching can be ensured, but the conduction loss and current ripple are limited. And with this uh, device modulation, we could uh, derive a convert model analytically. Um, here shows the switching waveform in one cycle, um, inductor current actually. So by tracing the current waveform at the triangular waveform, we could derive the instantaneous uh, switching current as well as each time intervals. And here shows the time intervals within a uh, half month cycle. Uh, uh, as can be said, this is the conduction time for the synchronized switch. And this is the conduction time for the active switch. Here is the extended conduction time for the VDX. Actually, this converter model can uh, facilitate us to uh, analyze the converter performance, also to implement the VDX control. Um, next is about the inductor design. So we know that if the device implementation is determined, um, the inductor directly uh, influence the conversion loss, size, the switch and frequency range, also the current level. But uh, considering the gap variable usually uh, suffers from very large AC winding loss, and it is very hard to predict, especially combining with the lead wire. So here we select the model order as a demonstration of the inductor design. So the principle for the inductor design is to select the inductor which leads to the smaller uh, core volume and uh, smaller converter loss. So at the e so we consider the, the inductance from 4 microfarad to 28 microfarad. At each inductance, we will predict the, convert the dominant converter loss, including the device loss and the inductor loss and the capacitor loss. Also, we will design the inductor with different cores at different sizes, and the inductor design with lower conduct with lower converter loss and lower core volume is selected. This picture shows the predicted converter loss and the core volume at different uh, inductors. So, as, as you can see, no matter for the full load or the half load, the converter loss decreases with the increased inductance. But they all level out at a certain um, value after 20 microfarad. On the other hand, um, the, the required core volume increase with the increased inductance. But it seems at this region, the core T106 has the smallest uh, volume for the demand. So 
So we select a twenty level array, and we implement the adapter uh, with the core TML six I show here. Mm -hmm. So uh, then we need to use the control uh, strategy to achieve the soft switching. Um, to uh, here we implement uh, the PSP based uh, arrival on time control um, to achieve the soft switching within the one cycle. So here is the um, structure for the control, and you can see uh, with the instantaneous input voltage, output voltage, and the zero count detection signal are sent and sent to the um, digital signal transactor. Totally, we have two control loops. Uh, in the upper loop, the PI controller regulates the output voltage. At the same time, um, it will generate the dominant on time collective switch. In the inner current loop, based on the analytical model, um, the um, time intervals required for the switch actions will be calculated in real time. And the zero current detection signal will be used to reset the PWM uh, in each cycle. So, uh, for example, uh, you can see here, uh, when the positive selective zero current signal occurs at here, the PWM the PWM time counter is reset to zero. Then the um, synchronized reference switch will be turned off after the extended production time. Similarly, uh, the active switch will be turned on and off um, based on the uh, calculated delays. Uh, in this way, uh, you can say the synchronization between the inductor current and uh, the base signals are, are maintained. Um, since the zero current detection signal is critical for the design, so we designed a, a VCD circuit um, based on the sensing resistor. You can say uh, the sensing resistor is connected in series along the input power line. And to reduce the conduction loss, we use a 10 million sensing resistor. Uh, Bottoms is amplifier to get a larger signal. Um, because this signal is actually an AC signal, so here we add a bias voltage to lift it up so that we can avoid the negative power supplies in the circuit. Um, to generate the to generate the VCD signal, also to uh, reduce the propagation delay, we use the high bandwidth comparator and isolators in the body. Mm -hmm. So with all this data, we build a converter prototype and verify it. Uh, this is the first prototype of uh, the PSC converter. So the input voltage is at 277 volt AC voltage uh, with 6 hertz line cycle, 16 hertz line cycle. And the output DC bus is at 480 volts. Uh, the output power at load is 1.5 kilowatts. Our distribution frequency is about 300 kilohertz. For the devices, we use the 650 volts GAN device from Afghan from Afghan system, and uh, mm, most of silicon MOSFET from Nvidia. Mm, the device margin here we use is 1.1. This is the experimental results at the full load. So here is the input voltage the inductor current, the output voltage at 480 volts, and the drain transport voltage. And this shows the, you have the, the AC current. So based on the power analyzer, the efficiency is around 98.9% full load. And the THD is below 5%. And power factor is about, is about 0.99. Uh, so here is the, um, Waveforms in switching cycle at two different uh, input voltage levels. So, as you can see, in this, in all the um, voltage level, the stop switching is achieved. Sorry, stop switching is achieved. Um, apart from the full load testing, we also, also operate the converter at half load and 0.75 load. As you can see, the efficiency curve is very flat for the three uh, points, all about 98.8%. Actually, at this point, it's almost 99%. So, 
and the, um, the THC is all below 5%. This picture shows the loss breakdown at two levels uh, based on the loss model. So the inductor contributes the largest loss, followed is the device loss and the capacitor loss. So in the future design, we will optimize the overall um, design for the water. Hopefully, we can get uh, better performance. Uh, with this, I would like to come to my presentation. So in my work, um, we designed a single phase plant based cell and capsic converter. And uh, we developed regular modulation for the whole cycle and the proposed uh, analytical product model with regular margin. Uh, the example design is demonstrated with the polar call. And uh, also to achieve the full cycle relax, we um, implemented the outcome control with real time calculation and the PPT signal. Uh, finally, uh, a prototype is used and uh, um, it is demonstrated with full cycle relax at 98.9% of efficiency. Uh, with this, I would like to end my uh, presentation. Thanks, uh, my professor and partners, for your help. Also, we would like to. Yeah, the capacitor, because the DC bus mm, need to uh, absorb, DC bus of capacitor needs to absorb the double line ripple. So uh, we use the very popular aluminum capacitor, which has very larger ESR. And also for my test now, I add another uh, film capacitor in the input. It also contributes to the loss. Yes. Yes, lower by five. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You mean here, why is it higher? No, I just mean that's the result. That's the result. Because if, if a lot of good results are heavier, what is the result for light? Um, you mean even I mean, lighter load? Yes. Yeah, for this, I haven't tested it. That's what I need to do next. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's the most challenging part for the Shibata, for the converting Yes, yeah, that's true. Why is the low frequency switching leg, uh, at, why is the low, low frequency switching average silicon instead of a uh, gamma? Yeah, like you mean why GAN works at half frequency? Yeah, yeah, why one side GAN and the other side silicon? Why not both GAN? Oh. Um, so, uh, for the second phase, like, actually, it only needs to provide a rectifier loop. So, it, it only um, works at uh, 60 line frequency, so no need for the GAN device. Yeah, uh, how, how do you how do you use the uh, uh, power sensing system? Uh, uh, why does it reduce the volume of sensor? Oh, so actually that is very good um, question. The sensor resistor is very critical. So so actually I compare the several different type of the sensor resistor. Finally, I use the sensor res resistor with that which has four terminal terminals. So two for uh, connect to the power line and uh, another two for the camera connection. So it has a better capability for noisy building. Yeah. So light mode operation, can you quickly comment on like what are some of the challenges that you're facing? 
Yeah, that is a very good question. So first, as uh, Dr. Jones says, it's about the THC. Second, actually, it's about the R factor. Uh, because um, so now I did not do any power factor conversation. So if I using the same input capacitor in the inputs, uh, at that low, the, the power factor will drop a lot. Yeah. And uh, also, you know, at that low, the efficiency will drop. Other questions? Uh, so you are switching at very high frequency. So I just want to ask, by using this, how much volume can you save from, uh, like, using the silicon device? Mm. Well, now I can't give you a specific number, but uh, uh, because um, for my conversion now, I did not optimize it now. Um, but technically, you know, the GAN device it can achieve even uh, the highest switching frequency up to microns. So the passive uh, components like the inductor and capacitor will be shrink a lot. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I was curious how much you can save like to get the same. Uh, I cannot say the specific number. Any other questions for me? All right, everyone, join me in thanking those speakers.